Welcome to the rigging tutorial from Martin Audio's Wavefront Precision series. In this video, we'll be covering how to rig WPC in a flown configuration. Before you begin to rig Wavefront Precision arrays, please ensure you use Display2 software to calculate the inter-cabinet angles and acoustic shape, as well as the array aim, ensuring the mechanical safety of the array you intend to deploy is safe. To begin rigging a WPC array, remove the WPC grid T from its flight case. Position the flight case under the rigging point, connecting the rear motor hook with a shackle to hole 20. Raise the flying grid out of the case to a working height, allowing you to connect the front motor hook to a shackle on hole 1 to achieve a two point lift. Wheel a WPC cart complete with four cabinets into place and position it under the chosen rigging point. Unlatch the cart top from the supporting poles on all four corners, lift it off and set it aside. Remove the supporting poles from the transport cart and raise the flying frame to the correct height ready to fix to the first cabinet. Lift the flying frame and position on the top cabinet. Insert the link pins in the front rigging positions on each side of the cabinet and attach the rear link from the top cabinet to the flying frame in the link position on the grid, ensuring the pin is securely connected to the link hole on the flying frame. Please check link pins are inserted, ensuring the cabinets do not separate when lifted in the air. WPC allows you to set the inter-cabinet angles whilst the cabinets are in the carts on the floor, allowing for an efficient deployment of an array. To set the angles of a WPC array, ensure all angle pins are removed from the rear rigging points. This will allow the link bars to drop, allowing the user to select the appropriate angle required throughout the four cabinets. All WP arrays require the first cabinet angle to be set at 0.5 degrees when connected to a grid. Please remember to check the link pins are inserted throughout the four cabinets, ensuring the cabinets do not separate when lifted in the air. Lock pins are to be left in their stow hole position to the right of the rear rigging spine. Lift the array until the transport cart is just clear of the ground. As the array goes up, the cabinets will open to the angles that you have pre-selected from the Display 2 project prediction. Insert the lock pin at the lock position on each cabinet to lock the inter-cabinet angles, making the array now rigid. At this stage, the cable loom should be attached to the grid and the first four cabinets connected. To remove the cart base, support the rear of the cart and remove the rear pin in the link position, holding the cart to the array and then lower the back of the cart to the ground. Repeat this at the front of the array supporting the cart and removing the front pins holding the cart to the array at the same time to ensure the cart base or cabinet is not damaged. Once the cart is removed, the four supporting poles can be placed in the base and the top fitted directly to the base and the two clipped together to be stored away. Lift the array to a height where a second cart can be placed underneath. Please ensure link pins are inserted so that the cabinets do not come apart when lifted. And then pre-select inter-cabinet angles on cabinets 5 to 8 as before. Lock pins should be stored in the stow hole position to the right of the rear rigging spine. Please ensure cabinets 5 to 8 have the correct inter-cabinet angle set as suggested in your display 2 project. Lower the upper part of the array down to cabinets 5 to 8. Insert rigging pins at the front positions between cabinets 4 and 5. Raise the array to a working height so that the transport cart is just clear of the ground, allowing access to the rear of the array. As the array goes up in the air, the cabinets will open as far as the pins were allowed to the angle that has been pre-selected. Insert rigging pins at the lock position on the remaining cabinets. Pull back or swing the bottom four cabinets backwards until the trapezoidal sides between cabinets four and five are touching. This will allow you to connect the upper half of the array to the bottom four cabinets. Drive the array into the ground to allow the rear rigging spine on cabinet four to meet with the rear rigging link on cabinet five. Insert the link pin into position, raise the array to angle, and then use the lock pin to make the array rigid. To remove the cart base, support the rear of the cart and remove the rear pin in the link position, holding the cart to the array and then lower the back of the cart to the ground. Repeat this at the front of the array supporting the cart and removing the front pins holding the cart to the array at the same time to ensure the cart base or cabinet is not damaged. To add additional cabinets, please repeat the process. 
When all cabinets and cables are connected, we can now raise the array to trim and aim. Landing an array is simply reverse of the rigging procedure before, lowering the array until it is just above the cart. Please ensure all cables are disconnected before continuing. Raise the front of the cart and the pin it in position to the front points of the array. Raise the rear of the cart to the rear rigging spine, placing the rigging pin in the link position at the back of the cabinet. With the lock pins now removed throughout the bottom four cabinets, lower the array until the cart is on the ground, taking the weight of the array, allowing the cabinets to collapse down until the trapezoidal sides are touching. With the array now grounded, carefully unpin the fifth cabinet from the fourth cabinet at the rear by removing the link pin on the rigging spine. Please be aware that the array may swing when this is done. Lift the array and allow it to swing on the front links, then lower the array down so that the cart meets the floor. Please remember to ensure all lock pins are removed so that the cabinets can collapse back down for transportation. With the lower four cabinets now fully grounded, remove the front rigging pins between the fourth and fifth cabinet at each side. Please ensure the cart is fully grounded when removing pins. Remove the link pins from the fourth cabinet and return to the stowed position. Once the cabinets are in the cart, connect the four supporting poles and the cart lid and place and ready for transportation. To de-rig the last four cabinets, place a WPC transport cart base underneath the array and lower to a safe working height. Raise the front of the cart and pin it to position to the front points of the array. Back of the array, raise the cart and pin the cart to the rear rig and spine in the link position of the array. Remove the lock pins from the rear rig and spine throughout the four cabinets. Lower the array until the cart is on the ground, taking the weight of the array, allowing the cabinets to collapse down until the trapezoidal sides are touching. We can now remove the rigging pin from the link position between the rigging bracket and flying frame, as well as the front link rigging pins between the touring grid and the first cabinet. We can now connect the four supporting poles to the WPC cart, as well as connecting the WPC cart lid, ensuring that the product is now safe for transportation. Packing away the WPC grid T requires you to remove the flight case lid and position the flight case underneath the rigging point. Simply lower the front point down on the motor so that the touring grid can be placed in position safely within its flight case. Once in place, remove the rigging hook from the shackle on the front position of the grid Then lower the WPC grid T into its flight case. We can now remove the rear rigging hook from the rear rigging position on the grid and store any rigging or accessories we have within the flight case. Lift the lid back onto the flight case base and secure the lock catches ready for transportation.